good afternoon, good evening, or good night. This is Julie with JFK Freedom. We're going to try something new with the mic. Um, I do have a word from last time, so I want to share that and then share y'all the new one. First of all, I want to thank the Lord for blessing me with these words and placing them in my mouth and appointing them this day over the nations and kingdoms of the earth if they so choose to listen, to uproot and break down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. It is a long word. I will put the topics in the description box because I can't remember. <laughs> uh, but we're going to start with the financial crisis. This is more for people who have more money in the bank, uh, but obviously it could include anyone. So he says, the bank is not your friend, more like, see you later, pal, on the wings of a financial crisis near you folks. So that was that. I would like to comment on that, but I don't think I can. I don't trust myself. So the Lord has opened up the commentary for me. I did want to say the videos are going to start getting a little bit longer. So I was so worried because I'm like, I know a lot of guys are listening and y'all have strict schedules and you got a job and all kinds of stuff to do but the lord's like forget about that just start sharing what you feel led to share so i will and basically i have had it on my mind to talk to you all about holiness because it is the caveat it is the game changer in all of this and even if you reach holiness this is the weird thing about the lord i don't know why he's this way but Sometimes even when you reach holiness, you don't receive the blessings that you've been like wanting to have. So he has told me like some people listening on this channel are, you're not going to receive what you want to receive. Some will, some won't. And then we have the thousand year reign. So if it wasn't for that, I would be really confused. <laughs> I think the thousand year reign is a huge load of grace and mercy. The Lord is going to pour out upon his end time saints because... Our lives get cut off as Hezekiah prayed. So he was sad that his life would be cut off in the middle of it. Of course, we all have different ages, so it may not be the middle for you, but it may be frustrating to be like, you may be frustrated at the Lord that life's going to get cut off at a certain point, but we have the thousand year reign to look forward to. I had some type of flu type thingy and I had a fever that lasted longer than Gosh, that was the longest fever I ever had. I did have a fever when I made that last video. And I'm trying to get off coffee. And I get addicted to it really quickly and easily. So, And I get frustrated with myself because I have the worst headaches. Migraines. <clears throat> when I get off of it. So I know I shouldn't even be on it. And I think I'm getting to the point where I'm ready to get off of it. Starts with the coffee thing. I did have a migraine. I know coffee's bad because God actually told me and he said it's basically a big old cup of detriment to your body. I know it and Man from Modesto had a video about it. Can confirm that is absolutely true. Coffee is really bad for your system. My body is changing so in the past like when I got off coffee I could do like the next day half a cup or a fourth of a cup and then an eighth of a cup several days out and then I would have headaches like every day. And then this time, I do my same little system, but my body will wake me up at like 2 or 3 a.m. And I'm like having a huge migraine. I got to drink a little coffee so that the migraine goes away. I've thrown up twice this year in the middle of the night because of drinking the coffee in the middle of the night and then throwing up. So anyway, it's not that I don't know my body. I mean, actually, <laughs> I don't really know it anymore because it's changing. So I'm really able to get addicted to it easily and my body's clock system is thrown off that is why i have the migraines and i'm about ready to stop drinking it because it makes me sick so i said nah boys so the satanic killer coffee headaches in life can't just be killed with a condemned pill can they hun nah sweetie beauty and boy howdy on ween does she know it folks Knows it by now that, you know what, Papa, I'm beginning to think this life was designed by you, Lord, to get a little bit, well, so it's true, folks, so it's true. Yeah, dog, so I speak of the messes in life today, folks, for can they? Nah, dear ones, we can't always blast that shiza to crap, 
like in your sweet to you or so you think video games, dear ones. And what you got walking around half naked on yo? This ain't the 1800s, bro. And ain't no woman around need to be showcasing with a corset or some shiza what she got bro like that. And nah, son, ain't no options like loose as hell t-shirts. She tries to hide that shiza finally under for now, boys. Or did I? Didn't I tell you, son? I did, bro. Or have been, rather. Yeah, doll, so I speak of guiding this here chick of mine carefully, dear ones, into her destiny, folks. It screams out to you today in the spiritual realm for you, too. And she's been longing to tell you this one, folks, but has held herself back in error, actually, this time of, he said, yeah, hun, so tell them what I want, babe. So I don't know if y'all ever heard that pastor online who spoke of, uh, he was a black pastor and he did some kind of fast, uh, very many days. And then the Lord confronted him about his problem with lust. And he spoke about it and confessed it to the whole church. I was amazed by that story because the way the Lord came across to him, the Lord was like, you have this sin. And the man was like, no, I don't. And then God got angry. He's like, you have this sin. And he's like, no, I don't. And then God had to take him into a vision and show him like him. He showed the guy himself acting in a lustful way towards a lady crossing the street or something like that. And then the guy was like, oh yeah, you're right, Lord. When it comes to the Lord, like, he can still speak to you even in the midst of you being sinful. He can still speak through sinful vessels. I know that sounds crazy, but you can just think of Balaam's donkey. That was a donkey. And you may want to say that it's holy, but <laughs> I think if, if the Israelites wanted an animal to be speaking, it would be, I don't know, something closer to a unicorn. I know unicorns don't exist, but like, anyway, when it comes to me, uh, there's this whole blasting process. You can think of like a sand blaster being used on the outside of a building to blast away those tiny little pieces of fleck, uh, dirt, and stuff that don't look so good, or even spots with mold. You got to go in and get some of that out. You got to dig that out. When it comes to hearing from the Lord, there are different levels and different ways He could speak. So He can still, even if you're on the dark side, He can still blast through all the darkness and flash you with a big flash of light and a dream from him or a word like that can happen for sure if you're on the other side though if you're on god's side and you claim to be on god's side but you still have sin he's going to challenge you on that if you claim that you're like holy and you're not he's definitely going to challenge you on that and come up against you and be like oh really you're holy let me see you deal with this situation over here so it's not always a one and done. It can be a full, full out big situation that you have to deal with also that can reveal how holy or how unholy you are. And then God sees how you want to deal with that. So, and it also goes back to your attitude. We'll be talking about Hezekiah a little bit later, but, and you can think of Solomon's attitude when he was given that dream by the Lord. Your attitude about things is a game changer and also a huge part of it. So if your attitude is high and mighty, he don't really want to work with you. Uh, not so much. Uh, but if you're like, okay, Lord, here I am. Make me holy. There are some songs out there like that. I get nervous. I used to get nervous to sing them in the past. I still get even more nervous because I know. There's even more in me that the Lord could crush and press to get me to holiness. And I do react out of a sinful way sometimes to certain people. So, uh, and I know it. So anyway, um, that being said, when you get closer and closer to that holy status and it may, and God sees everything. So he sees your, your video games you're playing. If you know a certain video game should be taken out, you get rid of that video game. And you choose to play a different video game. And then God's like, I want you to get rid of that video game too. And then you're like, hmm, what am I going to do? If you choose to get rid of that video game again, and like you keep following the Lord, even though your heart may not be into it quite yet, God honors that. And then you're getting closer and closer to, and then you add leanness of the soul, which is like starvation mode almost. It's like, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for you. You get closer and closer to that status 
He's really ready to reveal himself to you in that wilderness, so that is what it takes. That was not very specific, but anyway, <laughs> that is partly what it takes to get close to the Lord and hear from him if you want to hear from him more often. And I think he's getting ready to reveal himself to many people that listen to this channel. But I think with the world events that are coming up, uh, there's a lot, there's a very high chance that God is ready to speak to many people. He's even speaking to the reprobates and others that don't even realize that that storm came from the Lord. Uh, so he's speaking to the whole world at this point. But to us, we will get a more intimate view into the, the throne room. So he said, yeah, hun. So tell them what I want, babe. And no, boys, it ain't no fasting. Okay, it is a type of fasting, bro. But more like, yeah, bro, so those ginormous amounts of food you consume at times, bro, not really a problem, chick. Your heart, son, that's the real place I want the fasting to take place, folks. And the food is just, well, for real deals, just a starter, if you will, dear ones, for what I... It's intense, bro, to know that... What, Papa? So you actually heard me, Lord, when I despised... Yeah, bro, think not so much her probby wobby problems in the other world of her brain trickling down into for real deals, folks, of and how, Lord, will you for sure help me stay humble on this one, Papa? Okay, <laughs> I didn't mention it before, but basically the Lord can hear your thoughts every day, every second. So when I receive the Rima, sometimes he will bring a thought out that I haven't even it was like a thought of a thought, and I didn't even realize it was there. And he's like, oh, really? You're going to go this way on me? Okay. <laughs> he turns it into a joke sometimes, and he's really funny. But inside, I'm like, oh, man, the Lord is so right. So uh, that's another way of intimacy with the Lord is just to be aware that he is listening to everything you do in your brain. So he said, how will I stay humble on this one? He's talking about the Boaz situation. Oh, I'm helping, bro. More like shoving this dear little gal of mine, folks, in advance of it all, off the cliffs of life, dear ones. Yeah, folks, so she barely has one, actually. Is grasping her grasp. Ain't no grasping about it, dear ones. She's just waiting calmly on their A words to call her back, bro. Respond to her. And yeah, son, just to answer your sick question on your... Bait, bro. Yo, dear chick for this, for sure, dangled the bait to her of, and I have this whole month free. I don't know what to do with myself, but oops, B. I didn't mean it after all, B. Yeah, bro, it was bad that week. By the way, I emphasize the words the Lord shows me. I'm trying to read it to y'all the way I receive it, okay? Because he emphasizes words and stuff and slows down and gets louder sometimes. Too bad for this chick that she idolizes... No one anymore, bro. And I mean it, dog, when I say, Okay, let's change topics, dear ones. And what shall I say of you next, my loves? Pain, dear ones. And the pain of rejection like that, folks, when you get the person is smiling in your face, but the knife is slowly slicing up my innards, Lord, all in a move that makes me wanna... Yeah, so I actually had a vision last time when the Lord addressed this situation to me of a person smiling and just slowly pushing a knife into the belly. And that's what he's referring to. Back to the message. Yo, dinners, chick, are about to get, well, normal, sis, and make them, dear one. Yeah, doll, so I mean for yourself, chick. For what with your... Yeah, hun, so they actually think you're blowing there, eating out all the time for yourself, eh? And you need, what, doll, an extra thousand dollars just so that you can... Strain, dear one. You need to be for damp string on yourself with that budget from now on, dear one. And no, chick, the missionaries in life don't go around broadcasting it to any and everyone that. And little Mumpsy Chumps and I went on a trip to Vegas this week, B. Nah, dear ones. And no, sweetie beaties. If you've somehow managed to dip your little toe, or big rather, for some of you, into the murky, waddy waters of. Stop, dear ones, with all that trash for. Trash and trinkets, dear ones, and yeah, doll, so I mean for your soul, chick. Me, dear one, I am the Gluck Springer in life, folks. And well, let's just say it to them straight, doll, for now. The whole food popping up onto your table when you're just slightly hungry, chick. Nah, dear ones, think starving flight mode status needed and in place for me to. What, dear ones, actually makes the widow and Elijah's story so endearing, folks? 
Exactly, my loves, the details, dear ones, that she was about to pop off in life, go insane from having no real friendships at all, bro. And here he comes, too. Doesn't know it at all, bro. This dad sick to him and his pride, ego too high in the sky for now, bro, for him to know that. You know what, folks? I'm beginning to think this new gal here of mine doesn't have any salt, dear ones. It's what you need. And burns, bro, doesn't it, at times, chick? These words of, what, Lord? So you're saying I can't say the truth? Well, I didn't quite say that, doll. But, well, slickness, babe. And yeah, hun, so what do you say we add that simple thing to our repertoire for love, dear ones, as felt the entire world, hunts for damned schwer to the world, hun. You're broadcasting all your dirty laundry to the world, hun, when you say, like her in past times, hun, like her. But have I? I have, dear one, buttoned up her two cleavagey chest at times, bro, in past times, boys, so it's true, dog. So it's true. But should you? Yeah, dear one, so they will chick go for the jugular on you, doll, if you don't. Never was no excess in your life, chick, was there? In her, lay off her purple at times hair, chick, for does she? She was, dear one, screwed over at the salon. Definitely did not get what she wanted that day, folks, but well. Will I, Lord? She did, bro. Have the ballsy balls to... Yeah, so... <laughs> Actually, I wanted like an ombre effect on my hair and that lady like turned me into like an elf from Lord of the Rings that day. <laughs> and I could tell she was new because she kept asking in some other language what to do to this other person. And uh, in a situation like that, it's pretty easy to guess what they're saying in that other language. So I was like, this chick has no idea what she's doing. I'm going to Google this or YouTube it. And I did. I just ordered the stuff online and I do do my hair myself. I did almost fry it one time, but we made it. I made it through the frying stage and didn't have to chop it all off. So that, that was a, a, a victory in itself. <laughs> uh, I do put oil on it on the part that I almost fried. So he said, practice it, dear ones. And yeah, dolls. So I mean your new awareness of me. For am I, bro? Yeah, doll. Just because I don't. It's silence, folks, for most of the week in her brain, too, except for these. Oops, Lord. And what, bruh? You saw that one, too, dog. Yeah, folks, I do. So I do actually love it, bruh, that her understanding of me has shifted to include statements like, And tell me, bruh, if this is a for reals deal, sister in Christ, I need to forgive her, dear ones, her so-called faults in your eyes by now. My mostly lovely listening there, listen, audience today of, uh, yeah, bro, so she ain't bearing that sweet to him, pussycat bro. No, no moho about it, folks. No need to say crickets, bro. It's all we need for now, folks. Uh, yeah, boys. So you and me working together on this channel, folks, is pretty well an easy-peasy, one-and-done process of ain't so scary, is it, folks, to turn on the computer and hear, what, Lord, did I hear that right, bro? You're going after me and my wife's goods today of different, bro. The two of you are different as they come in some ways, son. And boy, howdy, Unveen. Do I know it, bro. Ain't no games played on this planet that women, bro, they have been her Achilles heel on this planet for a long time, son. And well, hatred, bro. And yes, yeah, son. So I finally mean coming from her side at times, folks. Finally in a, wow, Lord, so you opened my eyes finally, bro. As to the how and why, they just don't want to seem to... Got that hand clamped tight over her sweet to most by now. If they'll just take the chance and see for themselves that, nah, that girl just looks so full of herself and her big tits channel of, not nah, bro, not too full of herself when it comes to, and how did I actually design this so-called system of mine here to work, bro? Some random dude at the top who's all full of himself gets to give you a phone call, take you out to dinner maybe, Stroke your sick for this ego, pal, so you stroke his back. Nah, bro, and no, son. Not actually how I designed this whole pastory thing to work. And yeah, son, think the sheep working with the shepherd at times, too. That metaphor, bro, is a little bit too... Well, let's just say every now and then, one of the so-called stupid sheep morphs into... Scary at times, ain't it, bro, to see. What, bro? So this little big tits, apparently, big prophetic gifting in the spiritual realm. 
knows that I choke on my own spit sometimes when I... Nah, bro, ain't like that at all, folks. More like... And, and little Sally Wally over here is waddling her weddle waddle too much, folks. Uh, uh, yeah, so I was thinking about how to explain it, and basically it's like a... I know it's a terrible metaphor, but you probably all have seen it. The little mirror in Beauty and the Beast, when she takes it and she's like, show me the beast. That's kind of what it's like for me. I just get a small vignette, small scene from your life. And I may perceive, usually if I perceive anything, it's the person's heart. So the Lord lets me see the person's heart in a matter and maybe the other person's heart too that was involved. And that's about it. And then it all goes black. It's like it goes black. It's like a curtain drop. That's it. And I'm never, I'm never nosy. And I don't ask the Lord for more information. Because I know it deep down, sometimes I am too interested in the info. So I'm trying hard to not ask for more info. God sees that. So then in that case, he may not give me any more info about that person. You know, so uh, it just depends. Love you, dear ones, for guessing it astutely on her A today of and you know what, folks? I think our dear local prophetess in the sky doesn't despise you one ounce for... Nah, folks. And no, dear ones, she doesn't. For is she? She is, bro. Finally, a lot like me. And hence, she. Uh, and there's a verse in the New Testament that says the Lord likes to use the nothings and the no ones of the world. If you look into the Greek, uh, that means someone with no family. So the things that people have been through to be used by the Lord in certain capacities have... Sometimes even that in itself just levels the playing field and there's no, those people that he likes to lift up are not, um, not looking to squash everybody else back down, basically. Uh, my daughters have been doing this thing where they run around the house singing happy birthday to me a lot. And not even saying happy birthday, dear mama, they say happy birthday, dear Julie. And it's making me cry because I have since I was about 21, I really stopped trying to have good birthdays because I just... And Damaris had a dream, the dream that I shared on the channel, which was a while back. And in the dream, there were people around and they were, they were singing happy birthday to me. And we were having a good time. And she said Jesus was there. So anyway, <laughs> I wanted to say that because I want to explain to y'all why I'm thinking about Christmas in heaven because everyone's like, Acting like Christmas is for sure not in heaven, no holidays. People talk about how the birthday cake is like pagan because it's round and it has the candles, you know. But since my daughter had the dream of me uh, celebrating my birthday in heaven, and I don't know if there was a cake, but because of that, I was actually questioning the Lord about a lot of other holidays. Anyway, that's why I was questioning that. So he said, yeah, doll, so just to answer your sweet to me question of, no, doll, ain't no Christmas in heaven, sweetheart, for you too. Too complicated, doll, for just any and everyone too. And yeah, hun, ain't really no need for gifts, dear ones, of friendship, and for all time, bro. That, silly, is the true purpose of heaven, bro. Yeah, yeah, dog. so I see you, my pasty pastor of the hour, bro, here he winked. And yes, son, so heaven is actually all about me, folks. But, well, what would my bad as hell reputation in this here city, folks, of your world, son? And yeah, bro, so I mean, with the onset of World War III, people going bonkers for reals deals, finally, bro. And yes, yeah, and so I mean, the finally for sure, bro, opportunities for some real as hell evangelism opening up out on them. Ain't no hell about it. Bro, for some of them, son, as you open up your your heart, bro. Well, sadly, son, I can see it's finally turning to mush, bro. When you see them, they're Israelites in the wilderness, running their run away from the pharaohs of the world, dear ones. And their so-called salvation, or so you think, and soon, sis. Nah, hun, and leave them, dear ones. Yeah, folks, so I mean to me. For will I? I won't, dear ones, let them enslave so-called humanity for much longer, folks. And are there, there are some strange creations out there, bro. And fine, son. And nah, bro, no need for you to be searching all up in them. A quick rundown chick of all that's going on in the online Christian community of... Okay, um... 
We talk about the end times, the weird creations. So basically, my journey started from reading the book called Along Comes a Pale Horse. And the guy describes some of the alien files from the government, the U.S. government. He called them the Greys. You can think of the movie E.T. He said some of that stuff was based on fact. So, long story short, one of the first books I ever read of people uh, giving testimony about something was a book about aliens. I read in the library when I was uh, in college. And uh, after seeing the way people have struggle, have a hard time coming up with short stories and original stories as a teacher, uh, that honestly, at that time, that really freaked me out. I thought those things were like, um, I believed, I believed in aliens for a long time. I thought they were like um, real creation somehow. The basics are basically anything that's been genetically modified is basically an abomination. So even your green beans, that may be GMO abomination in God's eyes. <clears throat> A baby whose eyes should be blue and they turn purple, abomination. When you start creating anything that's outside the womb of a woman, basically, or even a real baby in an artificial womb, anything besides that, I think, is possibly able to be demonically possessed. So anything that may say it's an alien and it's a free creature from space is basically demonically possessed. So that's easy. It's just good versus evil. And there have been creations created in labs by humans. And I am, I think there are some labs that actually are run by demons, but I'm not sure on that. And then there are some, just some really weird things out there. There are other prophets talking about this stuff in a way more specific way, talking about the creatures they've seen, even in the water, under the water. Some of those creatures are like spiritual. They may not have a full body. Some of them actually may have partially a body somehow, but it can survive under the water. Some things have a full body and they're fully possessed. So there's a lot of weird stuff that you can get freaked out about, but... And I don't go down those rabbit trails anymore at all. Uh, but there are people I like to listen to online. So if I hear them start talking about it, I don't turn them off. I like to listen. But long story short, it's good versus evil. It's abomination versus God's creation, which is man. It's David versus Goliath. Uh, there's no need to be freaked out about that. Okay, here we go. Control, dear ones. It's in my hands, you blokesy blokes. My blokes of the hour. Not hers, dear ones. So just, yeah, bro, think, take it to the house in prayer, bro, for now, for of all that she, and see it for yourself, bro, if, yeah, dear one, so it is actually time for me to start speaking with the masses of devilish thoughts you have in your brain, sis, towards her and me, dear ones, it's really me speaking through, so no wonder, anyway, dear ones, you get what I'm saying, and she's getting it, bro, got it a long time ago when I said, Takes a while, doesn't it, folks, to move them brainy brain waves, much like heaven versus hell thoughts, aren't they, dolls, from the other realm into reality, dear ones. It's about to get a little scary, scary for you folks of everyone, dear ones, will for sure, dog, someday in an apocalypse near you, bruh, be affected by, and she knows it deep down, bruh, that yeah, Lord, so this here sitchy situation really sucks balls, yo. But I know in a couple of years, yeah, dear ones, think retribution bloke. And yeah, bruh, so I mean you if you leave her, dear ones, to me at this time, folks. Or is it your job to, yeah, dear ones, so this oppy opportunity for friendship for her finally is actually coming from me, dear ones. Pray, you bloke, and let's get, how about it, dog, you and me getting a little touchy-touch contact with Again, bro, afraid to even hug this here cute chick of mine, so just, yeah, bro. So pause off the so-called Rima for now, son, for does it? It does, bro, simply have its beautiful way of coming to pass, folks. Like her, bro, like her. Watch, wait for it, and see one day for yourself, bro, if you aren't astonished to see. What, dog? So this here actually silly chick sometimes deep down has a what? Yeah, bro, think personality, son. Squashed, slipped, and shoved sideways, bro, by a terrible ogre of a... Not always his fault, bro, when it comes to her and her life story, bro. But, well, allies, folks. 
We all need them, don't we, dear ones? And some of you's choosing to turn to Love you, dear Keith, for sticking with me through this. Tough year, wasn't it, son? But well, she'll be there, bro. He didn't finish that sentence, but he meant on the other side. Some day, on a sweet day, coming up near you and soon of Shh, dear ones. Still your little hearty hearts longing for and did I rebuke her or not, son, in private for? I did, dear ones, finally ask her to calm the F down on pegging me on my own condemned timeline. I did actually tell her, blokes. But, well, the hezekiatrists of the world do exist, dear ones, even if they don't. Complaining, dear ones, deep down on my A today that, yeah, so, the Lord did give me a timeline about my death. I was happy about it. And then... He told me I'd be sad about it when I finally got this friendship from this guy. And I thought about it. And I was like, well, if God wants me to die at a certain time, then that's it. <laughs> so I did not pray the prayer of Hezekiah. But the Lord has revealed it to me. He will bless me with a similar blessing to what Hezekiah got, which was more time. So, yeah. By the way, I just want to be clear, just because the Lord compared me to Hezekiah does not mean that I take on all the traits of Hezekiah. He was definitely different from me. But we, we were both similar and then our life sentence got extended a little bit. Yeah. This is the praise that Hezekiah gave to the Lord. For Sheol cannot praise or thank you. Death cannot praise you and rejoice in you. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. It is the living who give praise and thanks to you, as I do today. A father tells his son about your faithfulness. The Lord is ready to save me. Therefore, we will play my songs on stringed instruments all the days of our lives at the house of the Lord. God bless you.